Welcome to the Any Noise Experience Podcast, Endurance Noise, Random Musings. It's October 1st, 2020, a Thursday, about 1.30 here in Bakersfield, California. And I was going to continue on with the uh, London Marathon preview. Yesterday I did the men's preview. Today uh, is women's preview. Saw a couple articles that I was going to take information from. Podium Runner and Let's Run, of course, both did pretty good uh, articles. Podium Runner starts off saying that while the pandemic altered their training, they'll be running their best with an Olympic berth at stake. I guess even though the Kenyan athletics pick the team, they still got to do well today so that they can stay on the team. Unlike the Americans where we had our qualifications, top three make it to the Olympics back on February 29th. And even though the Olympics have been moved to 2021, those athletes get to stay on the team. So Kenya has been often known for being kind of crazy the way they pick their teams. So they're going to be teammates, hopefully. Says both of them are 26. They have the same management, Rosa and Associates, and the same shoe and apparel sponsor, Nike. But they don't train together, and they don't really know each other very well. Um, Coast Guy, I guess, uh, trains at the original Rosa camp in Kipsat, and it's at 9,600 feet. Wow, that's really, really high. And, um, and Ch Chengak, uh, um, Ruth, is trains in Dagon. And she coaches, she runs at 6,400. That is a big difference, man, 3,000 feet. I can't believe you train at 9,600 feet. That's like the top of Mammoth. So, and of course, you know, last year, Chicago, we talked about this. Um, Coast Guy shattered the Paul Radcliffe's 2003 marathon record by 81 seconds. Yeah, that record had been around for 16 years when she ran the Chicago race. I remember getting up that morning and watching it live on television. Pretty phenomenal. 2.14.04. Just went out and crushed it. Of course, she was wearing the shoes, and they are often a topic of conversation. In fact, at Bakersfield Distance Project last night, we were talking about the Nike shoes, and I was telling Denny, who ran Boston, uh, she joined my group 10 years ago, and one of her goals was to get to Boston. Took a couple of years for her to finally figure out the marathon, and then she qualified. And unfortunately, the Boston she ran was when the Boston bombing came. So she wants to get back. She's 57. And I think told her, hey, we're going to have to get some of these shoes. So she's looking for that. Um, Ruth's career began with a bang also. And in 2017, she ran a 222. And then she got under 220 in the same race the following year. And then um, amazingly, just 75 days later, she ran 217 in Dubai. And Dubai's, you know, she did have the second best mark for quite some time. But um, so they talked to him and they said that the pandemics had impact on their training. Um, Coast Sky said that one of the problems with her training was she didn't get to spend as much time at the high altitude and had to train in small groups or by herself. Ruth has been, uh, didn't really give much details, but doing 100 miles a week or so. Um, and she says, obviously, same thing with COVID in Canada, in Canada, Kenya, that she was not allowed to train with others. It's interesting. Whenever you see, like, I, I kind of, I, magazines and stuff, they'll say, oh my gosh, you know, so-and-so runs 100 miles a week. You have to realize that, you know, if they're doing six-minute miles, now the men are probably doing six-minute miles, let's say just to make the math easy, six-minute miles, 100 miles a week, 10 miles an hour, they're just running for 10 hours a week. So, you know, when you look at her 100 to 106 mile weeks, she's basically doing, you know, 10 to 14 hours of training a week, which is very doable for any of you out there. I mean, I do that kind of training. Obviously, my mileage is half of theirs because I mainly walk. But, you know, sometimes I think people just get struck like, oh, my gosh, look at the mileage they're doing. And it's not really the miles. It's the time on their legs and feet. One of the advantages of being a, a runner is you can only train for about two, three hours a day. Poor cyclists, they can go out and do five, six hours. And of course, triathletes, same thing. So basically talking about uh, in the article, you know, that um, they're ready to go. They don't expect to be crushing. You know, they don't think there's going to be a world record, but because of the training preparation, but you never know. One factor that will come into play is there will not be male pacers in the race. I remember in Chicago, she definitely had that benefit. And so they're kind of be going after the women's record. So that was the um, article on Podium Runner. Of course, Let's Run goes way more in depth. And it says that, you know, obviously we've got the world record holder, reigning champ of London, Bridget, going against the world champion, Ruth, and the fourth fastest woman of all time. In fact, Ruth last year won that uh, race at the Doha World Championships. And, you know, it was at night under brutal conditions. You know, the weather's in the 90s. Um, the good thing, you know, an American, a couple Americans will be running there, Sarah Hall, and Molly Seidel, who made our Olympic team in her first ever marathon. She had qualified with a half marathon. And then, uh, so we have a few Americans going there. 
um, one Ethiopian isn't going to be <clears throat> running because, you know, she uh, didn't pass the COVID test when they were trying to get on the plane in Ethiopia. So it does prove that the race is taking these things serious. And so basically they're saying, does anybody have a chance to beat Bridge if she's on form? And, you know, Ruth's time is 217, three minutes, th a time only three women have bettered, and she's not even within three minutes of Bridge. So that should be interesting. And Paula Radcliffe's 215.25 is one of, thought to be one of those big unbreakable records. So, of course, they say here on the thing, world record performances by the very nature are outliers. No matter how well Koskai runs in London, she's unlikely to run as well as she did in Chicago. If she only runs 216, um, she could be beatable. Um, then, of course, there's other athletes in the race. Vivian Chirat is Olympic gold medalist and beat Koskai in London two years ago. And Ruth has won her last three marathons. So, you know, and also it's a marathon. Anything can happen. Injuries from training, messed up stomach, bad weather, all that kind of thing. So you never know. <clears throat> but it's pretty much Koskai is kind of the person, the, the woman to beat. Um, like I said, here it says there are no male pacers. So don't expect Koskai to go out in 66.59 like she did in Chicago. Um, it's thought that the female pacers will be targeting women's only record of 217.01. So pacing looks like 68.15, 68.30 at the half, which means that uh, Coast Sky will definitely have some competition, that she'll have some company, that is, because, you know, obviously Chicago, she just went off with the men and just never looked back. So pretty good stuff. Um, of course, there's a few other Kenyans that have a chance at doing well. And um, the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, then if we look down, there's a couple Ethiopians and then, of course, the Americans are going to be there, Sarah Hall, Molly Sadell, and Lindsay Flanagan. Not familiar with Lindsay Flanagan. They all got there. Um, hopefully, they'll get some personal bests. Sarah had a huge race last year in Berlin, ran that 222, which is phenomenal, especially because she's now in her mid-30s, and her husband says her training's been going well, and she's ran some pretty fast. I know she ran a fast half marathon, and we'd love to see her do well. They're not, you know, anywhere near, you know, going to get, you know, maybe top 10 might be an awesome performance. So... That is the the um, preview for um, the London Marathon, the women's side. In the show notes, there's links to these articles. And as always, stay healthy, be boring, not epic.